Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how to edge two pieces of felt that are the same size and shape, such as the front and back of your Christmas ornament. I have my cruel needle threaded with some pearl cotton and it has a knot on it. And I've got the front and the back of my Christmas ornament, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up in between the two pieces through the front one from the back to the front, like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and tuck my knot inside. And then I'm going to take another stitch and I'm going to kind of come up in almost the same spot as I started. I like to be a little bit forward of it so that the next step kind of holds better. So I've essentially made a loop there. Then to begin stitching, I'm just going to slip my thread underneath that loop. And I'm going to start doing my stitch, which is to come from the back to the front. And before you pull it all the way through, you're going to pass your needle through the loop and pull. And then when we get to a corner, which is very fast on this little piece, I'm going to come in directly kind of, if you imagine, you know, a little square in the corner, I'm going to come in right in the corner there and pull through. And the same thing holds true. You're going to go through the loop before you pull too tight. And then normally what you do is you will go ahead and take three stitches in the corner. Um, so I'm going to put some tension on it and I'm going to take my next stitch in exactly the same spot. And again, I'm going to kind of hold that so it doesn't get loose on me. And then I'm going to press my needle through and pull. And I'm going to kind of arrange that so that that thread is coming out right at the corner. And then I'm going to take one more stitch in the same spot or very close to the same spot. And then I will again from the back to the front through the corner. And you'll see what you get there is this nice little cluster of stitches, which looks really attractive if these stitches were closer together. Um, so you'll see that if I come off this side using about the same distance, you'll see that that little cluster of stitches actually looks quite nice. Um, but because my first stitches were quite far apart, it just looks a little bit weird. Um, so you can do that. The other option is to simply space them a little bit farther apart in the corners. So I'm going to come down to the edge here. We're just going to continue on. And you can actually do your three corner stitches, but leave some room in between them so that it's not quite so clustered. And that's really helpful if your stitches are just farther apart so that everything looks nice and even. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and take my stitch a little bit farther from the corner than I did before. So I'm not really in that corner space and I go ahead and you know through the loop just as before and now I'm going to take the stitch right in the corner so I'm going to want to work my needle in and out so that it's right in the corner like that and when I take my stitch I'm going to want to make sure that it is that my top thread is coming right to the corner like that and then I'm going to put a little tension on it so it doesn't come undone. And then I'm going to take this stitch equal distance from the corner as I've been doing. Um, so it's basically the same size as all the other stitches. And you get something that looks a little like that. So either way, if you're taking lots of little teensy tiny stitches um, and having them clustered that close together in the corner isn't bothersome to you, then by all means go ahead and do that. Um, or if you prefer this look where everybody stays nice and open, you can do that. Um, but you do need to know how to treat corners because there will be corners. Now that being said, I will show you how to end this. Um, I'm just going to take some big stitches to get me back to the beginning. Um, so it's not terribly noticeable um, where you started and stopped. Uh, but that being said, I still tend to um, start and stop in a place that I can hide just in case they're not as neat as they could be. So like I have a lot of ornaments where I have a button or something right on the edge and knowing that I'm going to put that button there, I will go ahead and start and stop my edge stitching um, where the button will cover it. It's a little bit of cheating, uh, but it keeps me from having to worry about my stitches being perfect. So I'm just going to, you know, finish going all the way around and I, my stitches are getting quite large. And if I were working on a real ornament, I would keep them all nice and neat, but you don't want to watch me stitch around this little scrap that I'm just going to chuck, um, being all precision about it. So I'm just going to take 
and make it so that we can get to the beginning so I can show you how to stop. So after you take your last stitch, which I'm going to say is this one here, and I go through the loop, you'll see that, you know, my, my vertical stitches are the right distance apart. So all I need to do is get this thread going across the top. So what you do there is you can just slip underneath. And I like to go ahead and catch, you know, this thread here as well. So I kind of go underneath it at a, a diagonal. And then I take my needle and I pass through that loop one more time. And I pull so that it forms a little bit of a knot right there. Pull kind of tight. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to slip between the two layers of felt and go ahead and pull your needle out. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if I'm pulling out in the middle of my work, then I'm going to be able to see that. Um, but you won't. Um, it's the nature of felt. So what I do once I've done that is I'll go ahead and pull my thread straight up, put my scissors flat down, and I snip that off. And you can see that little tiny bit of pink around your fingernail over it and it disappears right into the work so you can't really see it. Now there is a little bit more thread at your start and stop point here. Um, but that being said, it's not, you know, super noticeable where you started and where you stopped. So if you don't want to cover that up, it's not a bad way to start and stop your th piece. Um, and on the back, it's not even noticeable at all. So again, you don't really notice when you're looking at this, other than my hideously uneven stitches, that I started and stopped right here. So that's a nice clean way to start and stop. Um, you will notice that when I paid attention to my corners, such as here, where I've got my thread kind of going right up over the corner, and you can always adjust that a little bit, it looks pretty neat. Um, everything looks nice and even and very intentional and even here this is not a bad look with all three stitches coming into the same spot it curves the corner a little bit more so if you want a little bit more rounded of a corner that is certainly a good method whereas this I think keeps it a little bit straighter and then this is what happens when you don't pay attention and my stitch here is off center from the corner and so this thread is not um, behaving right on the edge like it should and you can see there definitely that that's off from the corner so you just want to pay attention and then you can get nice neat corners like this and here's another example of my stitch being way to the left of the corner so this thread here isn't wanting to stay on the edge and it won't um, so just pay attention to your corners and you'll have a nice piece that looks like this and that's how I edge my Christmas ornaments. You want to remember when you're doing this, though, on the edge of a Christmas ornament, always leave a side open. Don't end your thread or anything, but stop stitching long enough to go ahead and stuff the ornament. Um, and sometimes I stop more than once to stuff. If I have, like, an appendage or something over here that's kind of futzy, I'll get past it and stuff that, and then I'll continue on a little bit farther and stuff something else, um, and so that I can get the stuffing very equally distributed all the way around. And then um, as you come to the end, you want to go ahead and put your thing. You also want to remember where you're putting your ribbon. Um, if your ribbon is being closed into the seam, you want to go ahead and remember where that ribbon goes. And often in the instructions, I will tell you to go ahead and pin the ribbon in place. It's one of the few times that I use pins, but it's to help me remember um, that something has to go there. Because more often than once, I have gone to put my ribbon in and realized I've passed that spot. So you just want to go ahead and um, be aware of that. But there you go. That's how you blank stitch around the edge of a Christmas ornament.